Hi everyone, this is going to be all about eVPN. Uh, this is actually part one of eVPN series, which is a very simple example of uh, what it is. Uh, we're going to look at first, we're going to review the traditional Ethernet, uh, how it's made, and then we're going to look at some eVPN examples, VXLAN, uh, and the actual configuration. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so uh, first things first, you know, uh, we had a switch. We had a switch with, with a single VLAN on it uh, or no VLANs on it whatsoever. It's just a, a single physical switch that each host can connect to and in fact get uh, Ethernet connectivity and they're all in the same layer two segment. Uh, then what we did is we decided, you know what, it'd be really, really neat if we can take a single switch and make it into two virtual switches and now uh, VLAN was born. Um, and uh, this is a normal nomenclature to where you can document different colors on the different VLANs on diagrams. So you have a green VLAN and a blue VLAN, which is nice. Now you, you took your one physical switch and you split it into two separate virtual switches. Uh, it's all great, but then we we'll say, you know, it would be even better if we can take this virtual switch and extend it upon this physical switch to another physical switch. And, and that's when that one key was born. So we, we, from the perspective of these hosts down here in the blue VLAN, uh, they don't know they're connected to separ two separate switches. It is in fact one virtual switch <clears throat> that we extended from, from one switch to another. So that's that's the traditional uh, infrastructure from from Ethernet's perspective. It's been around forever. Uh, it actually creates a whole lot of uh, problems in in this sense because uh, there is not a, a a smart control plane that actually takes care of it all. It's it's using the regular uh, switching nomenclature to where it's gonna. Um, flood the unknown unicast and broadcast and multicast, multicast traffic from every port except for the port that received it on. So if you create more than one link for redundancy purposes, you can actually potentially create loops. Uh, and, and that one queue doesn't address any of that. Um, so you rely on things like port channels and span tree to fix those issues um, and, and so on. So, so and there was actually kind of an evolution of uh, of different protocols that that trying to fix that that issue with traditional Ethernet and and dot one key trunks, uh, and there you know the Cisco came up with with Fabric Path, which was tunneling, um, kind of it had actually its own protocol that it's going it, to it, a layer two header, uh, but then there was Trill that, that they tried to do with a Mac and Mac tunneling. There was shortest path bridging. Um, that they're all kind of trying to fix this this issue to where when you extend different VLAN across uh, you know multiple Multiple switches, you don't rely on traditional Ethernet flooding methodology. You have some kind of a smart mechanism that, that decides what goes where. Uh, well, now this turmoil kind of starting to settle down, and everybody's starting to uh, kind of zero in on VXLAN as far as the, the transport medium for that, so the data plane. And, and notice I said data plane, don't confuse. VXLAN and EVPN. So VXLAN is just a it's a it's a transport medium. So it's it's a protocol. That all it does is it tunnels uh, layer two traffic. Uh, it does not have any kind of smarts to to actually fix any of these issues I was talking about, and, and that's going to be in the in the next series, part two, part three uh, of this video series, you know, to look at those. But this is this is just kind of show you the the bare minimum of the VXLAN and EVPN. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, so again, the way that it looks is you would actually replace this trunk link with a with a VXLAN tunnel, and um, and what's nice about it, the, the benefit that it does give you is it's just an IP connectivity from one switch to another. Uh, what that means is if you had switches in between there, uh, they they don't need to know anything about the VLANs that you're extending. Uh, so like right now, if you have if you're adding a VLAN into your data center, you have to go and add it to every single switch. You have to disrupt spanning tree on every single switch. So that's that's a that's a huge change versus VXLAN. Uh, you only affecting the the switches what actually need that VLAN presence, uh, and VXLAN helps you do that. So that's that's really really uh, neat from that perspective. So let's look at the actual example of of the configuration and 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 you know the difference between the traditional Ethernet and and VXLAN. So let me let me go ahead and start this lab right here. Uh, so I have two two different servers. Uh, server uh, this one's 10.10.10.100, and we're gonna ping 10.10.10.200. Um, and you can see right now that this connectivity is unreachable because we don't have anything configured in between um, the the two switches. So let me go ahead and just throw in a, a basic configuration. So that one Q trunk, uh, what we talked about to begin with, uh, on these uh, on these switches. So I'm gonna put uh, the the access port in VLAN two. 
the the trunk link between them is just going to be trunk with all VLANs allowed on it. Uh, so let me go ahead and paste that. One thing to notice if you see span tree port type is edge and span tree port type is network, that's to speed up the span tree convergence in the Nexus environment, which is what this is. Uh, so as you can see, everything's forwarding now, uh, and that's because of those commands. And we can actually see the traffic, the pings going through from from one server to another. So um, you know that's that's traditional Ethernet in a nutshell. Now let's let me go ahead and break this trunk. Uh, I am going to actually convert it into uh, just a regular IP network. So it's going to be no switch port, IP address here, IP address here. I'm going to add some loopbacks on switch three and switch four for my um, reachability between the, the VXLAN tunnels. Uh, the network type I'm going to set to point to point for uh, convergence purposes and not to elect DR uh, for those of you that are OSPF nuts. And, uh, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, I'm, I'm not doing anything fancy, just creating regular IP network uh, between a switch three and switch four. And uh, let me make sure. So let me hit into here. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, yes. So and let me let me make sure that we can actually uh, see neighbors across the OSPF and they're up and then we can ping from one loop back to the other. Um, let's and we can do that. So everything everything's great. We have an IP network configured. Um, now let's uh, make sure. OK, so this sometimes gets stuck. Let me hit enter a couple of times. Um, uh, when you do continuous ping, okay, so good, and it's unreachable. Uh, you can see destination host unreachable is because um, uh, we broke that layer two uh, trunk in between switch three and switch four, so there, there is no way for them to, to be on the same segment anymore. So let's fix that. Let's create a basic VXLAN configuration that is gonna um, that is gonna bridge the, the two the two uh, segments together. So let me just paste this first, and I'm gonna do a uh, show run and kind of show you a, a, a sample of exactly what it's what it is and explain the commands on there uh, So this is on one side uh, <clears throat> Let me do the same thing on the other side. You can see two features you have to enable uh, VN, uh, VN overlay and VN segment segment VLAN based um, those features to, to so that you can actually that's on Nexus obviously so that you can actually see those commands available in a, in a configuration mode. So let me let me look at it. So first things first things first, we go inside the VLAN two and uh, and we say VN segment uh, ten thousand two and uh, ten thousand plus the VLAN number is a regular nomenclature. It doesn't have to match in any way. Uh, you can do whatever you want there. Um, and then we have to create this NDE interface. This NDE interface is actually similar to like a GRE interface. You specify your source, which is IP address of loopback zero. And then you have this uh, VNI specific configuration. So uh, each VNI that you will add in here will have a VNI specific configuration down here. And I am doing the simplest thing possible here, which is saying anything that comes in into this VNI, uh, config VNI interface will just be ingress replicated to this peer. In this particular case, that's our that's our uh, the neighboring switch. So it's saying anything that comes in this guy on VLAN two uh, is is in fact going to be replicated across this um, this interface. So that's that's pretty much it. You know that's that's the simplest uh, way to to actually connect it to. And as you can see now, uh, we now can ping across. So. Um, uh, that's it. That's the end of the, the demonstration here. But what? Um, uh, well, actually, let me see the NV uh, VNI interface. You can see it's up and up. Uh, it's, it says multicast group is not configured. We're using unicast static, static to con connect the two. But that's it. Uh, we actually haven't addressed a lot of the issues. We haven't addressed the scalability issue of the control plane. We haven't really. Um, well, the, the loops are gone because there is no layer two anymore. So you, you can, as long as you have IP connectivity, that's fine. But we have a lot of scalability issues here uh, to where if we add, we have 10 switches, we're going to have to have nine peers in each one of those 10 switches. They're all going to be, uh, they're all going to be doing head and, head and replication for all the broadcast traffic, which is, which is not something you want to happen. Um, so again, and all those issues are actually going to be fixed 
with, uh, with a model of the layers of protocols that we're going to talk about in part two, part three, and part four of this video series. So uh, again, this is just to show you the bare minimum. Uh, what does it take? What is BXLAN? You know, how does it work? And if you guys want to see more, if you want, if you want to kind of go into part two, part three, part four, like or comment on this video. We kind of want to gauge the the audience's uh, interest in it. So if we do have you know 20, 30, whatever likes enough to warrant building more videos, we'll go ahead and start start continuing this series. Uh, so yes, go ahead, hit like, hit comment, whatever, and uh, till next time.